Hello everyone, welcome to Higher Thinking. My name is Matthew Higher, and today we're going to be starting a new series on how to make an MT Connect adapter. In this first video, we're going to be learning the basics of MT Connect, such as what it is and what the three components are that make up MT Connect. We will also cover getting the necessary software installed. Let's get to it. <laughs> Before we get started with the installation, I just wanted to do a brief overview for anyone not familiar with how MT Connect functions. MT Connect is a standard that has been developed to allow all types of industrial machinery to speak the same language. It basically takes the information you get from a machine and translates it into a language that can be read by an MT Connect client software. This allows you to have one dashboard that displays information from machines that have completely different functions and different manufacturers. MT Connect consists of three different components, an adapter, an agent, and an application which I will refer to as the client. The adapter is a piece of software that reads information from a machine and converts it into data that is then sent to the agent. The adapter is the portion that we will be programming in this series. The agent is a program that takes information sent to it by the adapter and converts it into the MT Connect format. The output of the agent is XML that conforms to the MT Connect standard and can be read by MT Connect compliant applications. The last portion is the client. This is an application that is used to retrieve MT Connect data from the network. Clients come in many different forms. Some may be in the form of a dashboard that allows a manager to monitor a host of machines from one place. Others may simply collect information gathered from the machines and store it for later consumption. In this series, we will utilize a C-sharp library called TrackHound to create our adapter. TrackHound takes a standard MT Connect library and creates a wrapper that makes creating an adapter really simple by abstracting away a lot of the nitty gritty implementation details. The best part is that TrackHound uses an MIT license, so you can use it however you want with no restrictions. For this series, I will be utilizing data from a FANUC controlled CNC, but this isn't really important and we won't be going over that code. FANUC has the Focus API, Beckoff has TwinCat. Other controls will have their own APIs and SDKs that allow you to get information from the control, so you will need to find the proper API or SDK for your control type. If you happen to be making a FANUC MT Connect adapter, you can check out my FANUC Focus playlist to learn how to use the FANUC Focus API. With that, let's get started. There are many different agents available to download and use, but we will be using the TrackHound SHDR to HTTP agent. SHDR is the underlying protocol of MT Connect, but to put it simply, SHDR is a pipe delineated string of attributes and values. We will go into more detail on this later in the video. To download the agent, we are going to go to the TrackHound website. The link is in the description. Once you are there, click on the downloads link at the top. We will be brought to the MT Connect HTTP agent. Click on Download Installer. Once it is finished downloading, open the installer. The first page of the installer is the license page that covers the MIT license that I mentioned earlier in the video. Go ahead and read through this and then select I accept agreement and click Next. Here, you can select a custom location to install the agent. I'm just going to leave the default installation path and select Next. On this page, you will need to select the .NET version and architecture you want to install the application for. I am just going to select Windows X64 .NET 4.8 framework. If you are installing this on an older computer or a machine front end, you may need to select a different option. For instance, if your machine front end only has a 32-bit processor, you will need to select one of the x86 options. On this last page, make sure all the selections are correct and hit install. Once the installation has completed, ensure the open agent configuration and open install directory boxes are checked. You can leave everything else unchecked and then hit finish. You should now see the agent.config.yaml file open in notepad or whatever application you use to edit text files with. In my case, it is open in notepad++. We won't be editing any of this, but I wanted to go over it so that if you need to make changes to it, you will know where to go. There isn't a whole lot that we need to know in this file. Most of it we won't ever have to change. However, there are a few things that we may need to change depending on your network environment. The first thing I want you to note in this file is in the adapters section. This section specifies the port that the agent will listen on for any incoming data from the adapter. You can specify a host here if the adapter is going to be on a different computer and the port. 
By default, the port is 7878. However, if this conflicts with something else on your network, you can change this. A bit further down in this file, under the HTTP server configuration area, you will see port 5000. This is the port that the agent will send out data on. This can also be changed if it conflicts with something else on the network. If you are interested, go ahead and take a look over the rest of the file. However, most people are not going to need to change anything else in this. You should also have the installation directory open. If you don't, and you installed the agent in the default location, you can get there by navigating to C, Program Files, Track Hound, MT Connect, HTTP Agent. In the MT Connect Agent directory, you will see a folder named Devices. Go into that folder and you will see a few XML files. These files are sample files for various machines. You can either use one of the samples, download the FANUC device XML I created, or create your own. If you want to use the one that I created, you can click the link in the description to download it. These XML files are templates that will be used by the agent to convert the information you send it into the MT Connect standard format. Let's take a look at the FANUC device XML. Because I want to be able to demonstrate the use of MT Connect, I intentionally created the FANUC device XML to be very simple. Inside the file, the first tag is going to be the devices tag. In here, we will give it an ID, a name, and a universal unique identifier. The unique identifier is not required and can be left out if you decide to do so later. When we create our adapter in another video, the name and the unique identifier can be used to specify which device our adapter belongs to. The next tag is going to be the description tag. This tag just allows us to specify information about the device, such as the manufacturer, serial number, and other information we want to include. The next line contains the data items tag. The data items tag will contain one or more data item tags. Each data item tag contains information about a single data point. For example, an access position, the current mode, or status of the machine. Each of these will be located in its own data item tag. You will notice there is a single data item tag inside the data items tag at the top. This data item tag contains information about the availability of this adapter and should be included in every device XML. Each data item tag will contain a category, an ID, and a type. It may optionally include a subtype, units of measurement, and other attributes that you can learn about by visiting the MT Connect standard documentation, which is linked in the description below. The category attribute is going to be one of three categories, an event, a sample, or a condition. An event represents information with a state, like a mode or an active program name. An event can contain both numbers and text. A sample represents information that changes constantly, such as an access position or motor load, and a condition represents information that indicates the health of the machine, such as an error state or an alarm. We will be utilizing each of these in the adapter we create. The type attribute will have a value that indicates the type of information being sent to the data item. This tag contains the type of availability. We will see some other types in just a few moments. However, there is a complete list of standard types in the MT Connect standard documentation. When you start creating your own tags, you will want to reference this documentation to ensure that you are specifying valid types. We can also break up data into different sections or components. You may have one component for access information, and we may have another component for general system information. To create new components, you can use the component tag as seen on line 6. Inside the components tag, we will create a section for axes by specifying the axes tag and giving it a name and ID. We can then use another components tag to specify the information about each axis. For each axis, we will specify either a linear tag or a rotary tag, depending on which axis it is. Your X, Y, Z, and A axis on most machines are going to be linear, and the C axis and tool changers will generally be rotary. Each linear and rotary tag will contain an ID and name of the axis. In this example, we have the X, Y, and Z axes specified. Each of these axes contains a data items tag with multiple data item tags inside. For our example, we have the absolute position, relative position, and load for each axis. Each data item tag inside each of the axes contains the category, ID, subtype, type, and unit attributes. The category for each of the data points is going to be sample because these values are constantly changing. The category, type, subtype, and unit attributes have been set to standard values that can be found in the MT Connect standard documentation. 
Next, we will define a controller component. We will give it an ID and a name. Inside, we will create our own data items. Inside mine, I have created a set of conditions that represent the 10 alarms I can read from the controller and an event showing the status of the emergency stop circuit. Inside the controller component, I have created a path component. If I had multiple paths or processes on the machine, I could create a component for each path. This would allow me to specify separate data for each one. In my case, I only have one path, and inside it I have created data items for the main program name, the sub-program name, the mode, and the status. There's much more you can add to this file, and I highly recommend you take the time to review the MT Connect documentation to see what you can do. This is a very simple use case, just so I can easily demonstrate the creation of an adapter. My suggestion for this series is to download this FANUC device XML and use it as a starting point. You can easily change everything to match your machine configuration, and if you want to do more complex things later on, you can use the samples included in the installation and the MT Connect documentation to guide you. You will want to put the FANUC XML file in the device's directory. To make things simple, delete or move the other sample XML files to another directory. Then, go to the services window and restart the MT Connect agent by clicking on the start menu, typing in services.msc and clicking on the services application. You can then scroll down until you find the MT Connect agent HTTP service. Right click on it and select restart. This will allow any changes made to the device XML to take effect. After the MT Connect agent service has started, open a browser and type in http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 5000 forward slash current. It should bring you to a page that looks like the one on your screen. This is the information that is being output by the MT Connect agent. You will notice that the page is broken down into different sections for each component and that each component contains a group of data items. Looking at each of the data items, we can see that they contain a timestamp of the last update, the type, subtype, ID, sequence, and value. We don't need to worry about the sequence for now. That is internal to the agent. What I want you to look at here is the value. Each of the values should read unavailable. This is the default value whenever a value has not been explicitly set. Since we haven't connected an adapter and haven't sent any information yet, everything should still read unavailable. Once we start sending information from our adapter, it will be displayed on this page. That is all there is to the agent. If you liked this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing for more videos like this. In the next video, we will go over the flow of information in MT Connect and build out a simple adapter in C Sharp. Until next time.